Welcome back to my channel for another Leica episode. And to be honest, this is a video I originally didn't want to make. But a lot of people asked me in the comments if I looked into the topic of this video. And uh, so here it is, I looked into the topic. But why did I not want to make this video? This is about the new Summicron SL 35mm and the new Summicron SL 50mm widest open aperture on both lenses is an f2.0 and the reason why I refused to do this video is because I thought there is no value in these lenses for me because I already own the upper Summicron SL 35 f2.0 and the upper Summicron SL 50 f2.0. So I thought what's the point looking into new Summicron lenses if you already own upper Summicron lenses with the same focal length and the same widest open aperture. But here's the point, if you look at these four lenses, Summicron versus upper Summicron 35, Summicron 50 versus upper Summicron 50, you see the new lenses are substantially more compact. And by the way, their weight is also substantially lower if you have them in hand and just compare them. And that is something which finally convinced me to look into these new lenses for the Leica SL system, which just came to market a few weeks back. I actually didn't regret looking into these two lenses and shooting them on my Leica SL2S reporter and uh, testing them out. And everything you might want to know about these new Summicron lenses, a comparison between Summicron and upper Summicron for the Leica SL system, that's all about to come in the course of this video. Let's kick this off. The game plan for this video is simple and let me first manage expectations what I will not do in this video. I will not take a lens chart like this one here and shoot the Summicrons versus the upper Summicrons just to find out what the MTF chart is already suggesting that in tiny little details upper Summicrons are a tiny bit more sharp than Summicrons. Color might be a little better on the upper Summicrons than what you have on the Summicrons and contrast also might be a tiny little bit better on the upper Summicrons. That's not what I'm going to do because that is absolutely clear in particular when we look in a moment into the price tag which distinguishes these lenses here and these lenses here and if you look at the specifications and the data. What I want to do instead is I will quickly show how autofocus performance is on these new Summicron lenses because they have an improved autofocus system which in particular plays nicely on the Leica SL2S but also on the Leica SL2. Then I will compare the upper Summicron 35 with the Summicron 35 and the upper Summicron 50 with the Summicron 50 by means of the Leica spec sheet and then of course I will take these lenses out into the field with my Leica SL2S and go for a live shooting with my photo model Stephanie and then let's together judge whether we like these images. Are they meeting our expectations? Are they good enough in terms of contrast, sharpness, color? And do we actually all together think that these lenses are really good or maybe not as good? We'll find out in the course of the video. But for the time being, that's the game plan. That's what I want to do. Let's start with autofocus. Let's mount the lens on the Leica SL2S. Let's quickly test this via Jennifer, my model here in the background. Let's go into the specifications. Let's go for a live shooting. Let's have a detailed look into sample images. All right, let's get the beautiful and expensive upper Summicrons out of the way. And by the way, if you want to see my review on my channel about these two upper Summicron lenses, then have a look at my channel. They are all there. I will link them down below in the info box. Let's take the Leica SL2S here and let's get the body cap off. Let's start with the 50 millimeter lens. Let's get the 35 millimeter a bit out of the way here. Let's mount this. All right, look at that. This is a really compact design and clearly the Leica SL2S with the 50 millimeter or the 35 millimeter lens are ideal lenses based on their compactness, their low weight for street photography, reportage photography, travel photography, what have you. You get in a very compact design, I come to the weight later in the specifications, two common mainstream focal lengths which do not contribute a lot of weight to this camera body here. So that looks quite nice. Let's switch it on. And let's quickly test the parameters. So I'm on aperture priority, widest open f2.0. I'm in auto ISO, autofocus continuous. Here we have eye face body detection. That's also good. And let's start to focus and look how snappy this is. Immediately it frames the face. It also detects both eyes. It's also very sticky. Have a look here. This is really cool. 
This is really a very good autofocus combination here, what's built into the lens in terms of autofocus. And it's also super silent. And what you find then here in terms of tracking. And uh, you know, this is only contrast detection in the Leica SL2S, but it works like a charm. Look at that. Very nice. So autofocus works. I'm quite happy with what I'm seeing. Let's now quickly test the 35 millimeter lens. So look, let's get this off here. Let's protect it first. Let's take the 35 millimeter lens. Let's get the lens cap off. Here we go. Let's mount this on the camera body. Let's switch this on again. Same parameters as before. And here we go. Here is the face. You see it immediately recognizes the face. Very nice. I don't see the eyes yet. Let's get this a bit closer because Jennifer is small. And if it gets closer, you see the eyes are there. It's in the same way sticky. So focus tracking will work very well. We'll hopefully see this in the live shooting with my photo model Stephanie in a moment. But so far, I'm very happy with what I'm seeing here. I hope actually that this might be the fastest autofocus combination I've ever seen in the Leica system. So let's see what we get if we go into the live shooting. Let's quickly go through the specifications as we find them posted by Leica. And I want to start with the Summicron SL35 versus the Apo Summicron SL35. And the first big difference is the price. The price difference from the Summicron to the Apo Summicron is exactly $3,000. And if that is not an argument, I actually don't know. All lenses we are looking at here, the Summicrons and the Apo Summicrons are fully dust and splash water protected. So you can shoot them under all environmental conditions. No problem here. We also see here from the spec sheet a sketch of the lens construction and I come to that in a moment when we continue with the specifications. So here we have the view angle and field angle comparing them they are almost the same tiny little differences I actually can't explain them but there is a little bit of a difference it's not worthwhile to mention actually because it doesn't move the needle. On the lens construction where we just saw the sketch of both lenses we have 11 lenses in 9 groups on the Summicron SL and 13 lenses in 11 groups on the upper Summicron SL. In terms of aspherical elements, on the Summicron SL on the left hand side we have 6 aspherical surfaces and on the upper Summicron SL on the right hand side we have 5 aspherical surfaces and 3 aspherical lenses. Continuing to the minimum focusing distance with the Summicron SL you get a little closer 0.24 meter versus 0.27 meter on the minimum focusing distance on the upper Summicron SL and that also is reflected in the maximum magnification. On the Summicron SL you get a little better, little more magnification, 1 divided by 4.6 and on the upper Summicron SL you get 1 divided by 5 but that again doesn't move the needle here. It's really only a minor difference. We can stop down to f22 from widest f2.0 we have a nice coating on the Summicron SL that has become the standard now on Leica SL lenses. It's an Aqua Dura coating and we have the same also on the upper Summicron SL 28, 35 and 50 millimeter. And we have the same filter thread on all four lenses. I'm not going to mention this again. And in terms of weight, the Summicron has a much lower weight of 400 to 444 gram, depending on whether you operate it with or without the lens hood. And on the upper Summicron SL, they say 750 gram. And that's also what you see if you look at the lenses side by side. The Summicrons are just much more compact and therefore also have a lower weight. On the two 50mm lenses, kind of the same story. The price difference between the Summicron SL and the upper Summicron SL is here even more than $3,000. Again, I think that is an argument for many people. Dust and splash water protected I mentioned already. Also here we find a sketch of the lens construction. We have again almost the same view angle or field of view here if we look at this prime lenses. We have this time on the Summicron 9 lenses in 8 groups and on the upper Summicron 12 lenses in 10 groups. And we have 6 aspherical surfaces on the Summicron SL, 4 aspherical surfaces on the upper Summicron SL but 3 true aspherical lenses. The minimum focusing distance this time is better on the upper Summicron means you get closer. So on the Summicron SL it's 0.45 meter and on the upper Summicron SL you get closer with 0.35 meter on the minimum focusing distance and that also of course triggers a better magnification on the upper Summicron SL with 1 divided by 5 compared to 1 divided by 7.4 
on the Sumicron SL. Again, we can stop down to F22 from widest F2. We have here a difference in weight again, and uh, the weight of the Sumicron SL is 402 gram up to 446 gram, again, depending on whether you shoot it with or without the lens hood. And for the upper Sumicron SL, the specifications say 740 gram. And I repeat myself, Sumicron lenses are just more compact, have a lower weight, and therefore are ideal for travel, reportage, and street photography. In summary, the upper Sumicron lenses are way of more expensive than the Sumicron lenses, but they also have a more complex optical construction. And uh, in the MTF charts, which are published by Leica, you can see that under lab conditions, in the studio for instance, the upper Sumicrons will perform a little better than the Sumicrons. But that's not what I'm interested in because very often these lab condition tests they don't really tell you what's happening out in the field. And I really want to test these lenses, the two new Sumicron lenses in the field, shooting with Stephanie, looking into the sample images, and then making up my mind, are these lenses which I can fully recommend? Or do I recommend to people to go for a higher weight, a much higher price tag, and just stay with the upper Sumicron SL35 and 50 millimeter lenses? At the end of the video, I want to discuss a few of these images here, which I shot with Stephanie and want to point out a few things, also give you a better impression than what you see in the little video clip I just showed in terms of image quality and what you can get out of these new two Sumicron lenses. This is the first image I want to discuss. It was at the beginning of my shooting with the Sumicron lenses and Stephanie here. And this was shot widest open at f2.0. ISO 100 and 1 over 320 seconds of exposure time. And if you look at the background here, the background is blurry because it's shut widest open at f2.0. If you look at her jacket, part is sharp, part is blurry. If you look at her shirt, part is blurry. If you look at the necklace here around her neck, blurry. But if you look into her face here, on the eyes, on the eyebrows, on the eyelashes, on the lips, this is all super crisp and super sharp. And this is, by the way, a 200% crop. So on all the images I'm going to show, I will crop in by 200% to show you how deep these pixels are on the SL2S with 24 megapixel, which is about half of the resolution of what you get on the Leica SL2. A very nice image, very sharp, very crisp, nicely rendered. Here another image, shut widest open f2.0, ISO 100. There was a lot of backlight here, as you saw in the video clip when I showed my live shooting and I could easily correct this in post here to get a nicely rendered image. And again, if we look into Stephanie's face here, this is brilliantly sharp if you look at that. So I think these lenses, even if under lab conditions and based on the MTF chart, you will be able to prove that the upper Sumicrons are better. And yes, they are a little better, but they cost you a fortune more. These new Sumicron lenses, they fully deliver. This is a very good image. And you see even here on the right hand side, I, this is pinpoint sharp. The left hand side eye already is a tiny little bit blurry, whereas the eyebrows here, they are sharp on both sides. Very nice, very crisp, and a really good result for a lens at this price tag here on the Sumicron SL 50mm. Throughout the shooting with Stephanie and the SL2S and the Sumicron 50mm f2, autofocus was performing very well. Here are three images already cropped in. Here's a half body shot. If I crop in again, you see incredibly sharp. Very well done at f2.0 by this camera lens combo. Here another image. Again, a lot of backlight here, but uh, I didn't correct it here as I did in one of the images before. 
but I corrected the face, a little bit of post-processing, the image is super crisp and super sharp, shut widest open at f2.0. And here another image where Stephanie finally smiled. The level of detail I got in these images is just absolutely mind blowing. Here a last image of Stephanie shot with the 50 millimeter before we switch to a little bit of cityscapes and then the 35 millimeter lens. That is the perspective of Stephanie I like a lot. And again, cropping in by 200% is very sharp, looks good. This was shot at f4.0, so you get also a bit more detail here in the foreground if you look at that. And again, the face looks really good, very crisp, very sharp. Before turning our attention to the Summicron SL 35mm, here are in a very quick walkthrough a few more images with the 50mm Summicron. And this is Zurich City, downtown, very sharp images, all shot at f8.0. Here, crossing River Limmat, looking at the people on the street, lots of detail. So this is not only good for portraits and for people photography, this is really good for street and also landscape because you get an incredible amount of detail in these images here. Look at that. Here's another shot across the city. And if you look here on the bridge, there is a police car, a woman here, I think, crossing the street. Very detailed, very sharp. And here a few images when Stephanie finally relaxed and looking at her face here. Stephanie used these stairs to get some rest and I was nevertheless continuously shooting to just catch as many images as possible. And here again, you see a 200% crop. This is incredibly sharp and a very nice image of Stephanie smiling. By the way, again, shot widest open at f2.0 with a very shallow depth of field and in terms of sharpness and rendering. This camera lens combo just delivers from all angles. Let's now look a couple of minutes into images shot with the Summicron SL 35. And uh, this is shot widest open f2.0 ISO 100. And if you look at that image from a distance, it appears as if everything would be sharp corner to corner. But if I crop in by 200%, again, I do 200% crops here. Then you see that Stephanie is actually nevertheless nicely separated from the background here and uh, it is a nice image with a wider field of view of course as we saw in the spec sheets the 35 millimeter just has a different perspective than a 50 millimeter normal lens here another image if we look into the face the story continues the summicron sl 35 is as sharp as its 50 millimeter sibling here again there was a constant change between sun clouds shadow light in more intensity or less intensity. We also had a bit of rain during that shooting and Stephanie's face here again, super sharp and super crisp. Here shooting her sitting on the wall. I was glad she didn't fall down on the other side. And uh, the story continues. Shut widest open f2.0, nicely separated from the background here. A bit of aberration here on the trees. That is something you can correct in post if you look here. There are some green colors here on the borders, which is not unusual if you shoot a lens widest open. Uh, here another image. Let's continue a little bit. I think that is a nice one here. And you see again, no change in terms of storytelling here. The 35 is as good as the 50 millimeter lens. And let's see what we have here. So here's Stephanie again sitting on a wall. Nice and sharp. Here you see the wind was blowing through her hair. And nevertheless, the eyebrows and the eye here is sharp. Same here. So the focus was sitting on the face and on the eye. And this is all widest open at f2.0. And there was no disturbance at all. This is an in particular remarkable image because here you see how the hair gets blurry if the distance from the face increases, but the eyes and the eyebrows are sharp. So that autofocus system in that camera lens combo delivers. And it finds always the eyes and the face and everything is crisp and sharp. Again, I was shooting also, oh, this is one I wanted to show. Because here you even see that the hand is not sharp, but the eyebrows and the eye in the background, which is only indicated here through her fingers, is still sharp. And uh, what I also wanted to show here, of course, are a few other shots. So here's a fountain on that place where we were shooting. Super sharp, again, widest open f2.0. And here again, in the wider field of view now, the city in the same type of images I shot before with the 50 millimeter lens. And this looks good. I have absolutely nothing to complain about that lens here. Lots of details, even at 24 megapixel. This will get even better and more impressive if you shoot on the Leica SL2 with 47 megapixels. And here again, a break, 
where Stephanie was resting and I nevertheless was dancing with the camera around her to catch as many shots as possible for my testing of these two new Summicron lenses. All right, that's it. That's all I wanted to say and show in this video. So these two new lenses, the 35 millimeter, the 50 millimeter Summicron in the L system, widest open f 2.0, they are really good lenses. We've seen now the sample images. We looked into image quality. I really like what I get out of my SL2S with the Summicron 50 and 35 millimeter f 2.0. And uh, I also did an in detail comparison between the upper Summicrons and the Summicrons. But there is one more thing I want to mention. And if you look here in this lens, let's go here. You see here engraved Leica camera Wetzlar but here on this lens, on the upper Summicron, which is the much more expensive lens, you see Leica camera Wetzlar made in Germany. And that is not the case for these cheaper Summicron lenses. You have Leica camera Wetzlar here engraved, but if you open it up and look below, you find actually here, if you look at that, it says made in Portugal. So they are not made in Germany. They are not in the same way made in Wetzlar in the headquarter of Leica as the upper Summicron lenses. Now, do I care about that? Not really, because a lot of things are produced abroad for Leica. Sometimes from the collaboration they have with Sigma and Panasonic, it might even be produced in Japan, what have you. But clearly here on the upper Summicrons, you have the label made in Germany. Here, these ones here, let's check this one here also. If we have the same here, let's have a look. And um, here you see it, I hope you can see it, made in Portugal. So here you don't have the usual made in Germany. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel, there's always more to come. Thanks for watching, stay safe and healthy and of course, peace out.